So today we are taking a look at this thing. This is a laptop running Linux Mint right now. There is outwardly nothing overly special about it, but what is unique, this is a Chromebook. So before we get into the sort of tutorial part where I sort of walk you through the process for this laptop in particular, uh, I do want to talk about why you might want to actually take an old Chromebook and turn it into a Linux laptop or a Windows laptop or really put whatever operating system on it you want. And the big thing is it does give a little bit more longevity to a machine like this. It also gives it just quite a bit more utility. So Chromebooks are kind of unique in that uh, I feel like you'd buy them for a specific niche you need kind of a laptop that just needs access to the internet but if something else comes up that requires some sort of offline computing task uh, maybe you need a Windows program that's uh, specifically you like you need it then suddenly a Chromebook no longer makes sense uh, that would pretty much make this thing obsolete. So putting Windows, or in this case Linux, on a machine like this does give a little bit more flexibility to suit your needs. And it's actually not that hard, at least with several Chromebooks. Now, it's at this point I wanna throw out the disclaimer that the process is not gonna be identical for all Chromebooks. In fact, this one was probably one of the easier ones I could have picked up. And you're gonna to wanna to really do some research to make sure the Chromebook that you're getting, if it's not one that you already have, though this is definitely a process that I would recommend for a Chromebook that you already have your hands on. But if it's something you're planning to pick up and then do as maybe a side project, do your research beforehand to make sure that everything is gonna line up the way you think it is so that you don't end up disappointed at the end of the process. So let's go ahead and get this thing turned into a Linux running machine. Actually, it's already running Linux but uh, let's go back and, and talk about how that happened. Now, before you even start enabling developer mode, disabling write protection, and installing other operating systems, there are a couple of things that you need to learn about the Chromebook you're planning to use for this project. First and foremost, what type of operating system you're looking to install on it. Now, in my case, because I'm wanting to use desktop style operating systems, we're talking about uh, Linux Mint, and we're talking about Windows 10, and other things that are designed for the x86 platform, I needed an Intel based system. So for that, I chose the Acer C720 because it does have an Intel Celeron processor. It also has four gigabytes of memory, which I was hoping to get at least four gigabytes. And then the one other thing I did look for that is kind of optional is a removable SSD. And that's just so I can easily upgrade it to a much larger SSD than the 16 gigabytes that comes with the C720. So the way that I did this was basically going over to eBay, searching for Chromebooks based on price, and then when I found one that looked like it might be a good fit, I then searched Google for pictures of it with the back cover off so I could see if there was a removable SSD in there, and I could also then look at the spec sheet if it wasn't listed very well on eBay. Basically, there's a lot of background uh, research that you have to do for each model that you're looking into. Obviously, if you're doing this project for a system that you already own, this is a step that you can kind of skip over a little bit, though you should still figure out exactly what is inside of your Chromebook so you know what you're working with going into the project. Regardless, if you're planning to follow along with this tutorial, you're following the C720 from Acer, and this is a really good candidate for this particular project, and it actually is fairly straightforward. So let's hop into that, assuming now that you have a Chromebook that you can work with. Now that we're gonna get into the tutorial proper for actually flashing new firmware so you can install a different operating system, I do wanna note that there are links in the description down below, eBay links for actually finding a Chromebook and that sort of thing, but also more importantly, the link to mrchromebox.tech and the specific pages that I'm gonna be referring to that you'll also see on screen. Now this first step, I didn't actually have my capture card going for. Fortunately, it's very easy to get working. You're gonna have to enable developer mode and you do that by pressing the escape, refresh, and power key on your Chromebook simultaneously. This will take you to the recovery screen where you're gonna press control and D to enable developer mode. You're gonna be prompted by a few security prompts about how you're enabling developer mode and how it's going to wipe your system, which by the way, it will wipe your system when you do this. So make sure that anything on the Chromebook that you needed backed up is already backed up when you do this. 
Also, there are apparently sometimes on some Chromebooks different physical recovery buttons, so you may have a different process for this. Again, this particular step is fairly straightforward, but it is linked. The specific page to enable developer mode is linked in the description down below. Go ahead and check that out. Now, as developer mode is enabled, this is going to take several minutes of just waiting around. Your Chromebook might beep a couple of times while it enables developer mode and wipes your system back to a factory reset. And you're just basically going to be staring at the screen that says OS verification is off. Press space to re-enable. Just let it sit there. Eventually, it will reboot back into Chrome OS and you're going to have a freshly wiped system. So the next thing that we're going to work on now is disabling write protection so that we can actually flash a new firmware. Now, this is going to be different for every Chromebook out there, but for my model in particular, there's an actual physical screw that you have to remove to disable write protection. So we're actually going to have to take the back panel off of the laptop and you'll see the screw here in the B-roll. There's just one screw. It's actually very easy to get to on the C720. All you have to do is literally just take it out completely. I just went ahead and threw mine away because I don't envision ever actually needing it again. And then you can put your back panel back on. Now I'm not swapping out the SSD just yet and that's mostly because I'm still using Chrome OS to actually flash the new firmware. So for the time being, I'm just gonna leave the SSD in there because it already has Chrome OS on it, which I need anyways. I'll come back to upgrading the SSD here in a little bit. So we're now finally at the point where we can actually flash the new firmware and we're going to be using the Chrome OS firmware utility script from MrChromeBox.tech. So the first thing that you need to do is go into your Chrome OS that's just sitting there now. It's probably a fresh install since you just uh, had it wiped with developer mode being enabled and you can either log in using an account or if you can just use guest mode that's also fine. Either is acceptable, you just need to get into the point where you can uh, run a Chrome OS shell or just a cross shell. Now, the way that you do that is you're gonna hit Control Alt and T together, and that's gonna open up a terminal window and it's gonna say cross there. And the next thing that you're gonna do is just type the word shell and hit enter, and that's gonna put you into the Chrome OS shell. From this point on the mrchromebox.tech website, you're gonna copy and paste these three lines of code. Now, you can just use uh, Control C to copy it from the website and then right click in the Chrome OS shell terminal window, and it's just automatically gonna paste it in there for you. And then just hit the enter key, and it's gonna go ahead and run and download everything it needs, and eventually you're gonna to get to this screen it's gonna give you the Chrome OS device firmware utility script and you're gonna have a few options that are gonna be dependent on uh, what Chromebook you have as well as if you've decided to disable write protection, which for my C720 for this operation, I had to. Now you're gonna see a list of options and you're gonna pick the one that says install slash update UEFI full ROM firmware, whatever number that is, type it in and just hit enter. Again, it may ask you for confirmation and when it does, it's gonna flash this firmware. Now you can optionally back up your stock firmware. Uh, that's totally up to you whether you actually want to do that or not. And to do that, you just have to insert a USB thumb drive and it'll just copy it onto that thumb drive. That's a very easy part of the process. But when it's done, you can reboot and you're actually gonna have now a brand new firmware that actually allows you to boot into whatever operating system that you wanna use. And it's a full, you know, newer UEFI BIOS so you can actually boot into modern operating systems that have nothing at all to do with Chromebooks or Chrome OS. And that's really it. Now, for those of you that are planning to upgrade the SSD, once you've actually flashed the new firmware, now would be the time to go ahead and actually upgrade that SSD to a larger capacity, which is what I did before installing Linux Mint. I did pull the back cover back off of the laptop and I swapped out that 16 gigabyte SSD for a 240 gigabyte SSD. So I could actually have a significant amount of local storage on the laptop for any files, documents, uh, video files, really whatever. 
uh, that takes up a little bit more space, especially considering that some operating systems are really going to eat into that 16 gigabyte SSD quite severely by the time you formatted and installed the operating system. Windows in particular would leave you with very, very little uh, in the terms of storage. So adding an SSD is not expensive. I think I picked this one up for just under $40 and it is the shorter, I believe it's a 2242 sized SSD. It's an M.2 SATA drive. So make sure that you get the right size and this will be Chromebook dependent. So when you're doing your research for your Chromebook, you know, take a look at what size of SSD you're gonna need for that particular model. In this case, this is what I needed and it worked flawlessly. Everything was recognized right off the bat. And from there, after I installed the new SSD, that's when I went into Linux Mint. So I just had to make a uh, installable thumb drive for Linux Mint and the tool that I use is called Rufus in case you're interested in that. You just use Rufus in conjunction with the ISO file downloaded from the Linux Mint website and uh, yeah, you install it onto the uh, laptop just like you would with absolutely any other uh, computer and it was a flawless installation process, at least again on my C720. And from there, I was into Linux Mint. Now that you know the process to turn an Acer C720 into a Linux machine or a Windows machine, whatever you want to put on it, I do want to talk about the machine itself briefly because this is running an old Celeron processor, two cores, two threads, lower clock speed. I believe it's a Haswell architecture on this particular model, has four gigabytes of RAM. And yes, you did see me uh, installing a much larger SSD and for or a Windows or a Linux machine, um, I feel like that's gonna be pretty important because you're gonna be taking up more of that space with local storage, installing programs, that sort of thing. So I feel like the 240 gigabyte SSD now in this machine, it gives it a lot more flexibility with installing applications. Now, one of the quirks I did very quickly have to overcome is the fact that these function keys are A, not labeled as F keys, but also in Linux, uh, there's no function button on this particular keyboard layout. So there's no way to actually access the things like uh, the display dimming or raising or lowering the volume. So it's actually a really easy tweak that I made. I just went into the uh, system settings in my Linux distro, Linux Mint here, and added keyboard shortcuts using the control key to basically serve as a function key for me to make uh, those secondary functions available. So keep in mind if you're loading up probably Windows as well, but Linux Mint for sure, or really any other Linux distro, these are your F keys, even though they're not labeled. And by the way, I am gonna be taking a look at Windows on this machine in particular, but I'm gonna dedicate an entire video to that um, because you might be able to get some gaming out of this thing. <laughs> No, you're not gonna be it. No modern gaming out of this thing, but make sure you're subscribed in case you wanna see this machine running Windows. Now, as far as the keyboard goes, it's actually really nice. Uh, typing experience is really good on this particular keyboard. The trackpad is awful. The tracking on it's actually okay. It's the clicks that are terrible. And for a machine that's actually quite old, the battery life actually held up fairly well running a 1080p YouTube stream. I got like two and a half hours on the battery, which I have no idea what kind of shape the battery is in, but it actually does give decent battery life considering the age and considering we're talking about a Haswell uh, era chip. We're not talking about modern CPUs that just barely sit power and are fantastic. We're talking about an era gone by where uh, two and a half hours was actually quite good. And if this thing was brand new with a brand new battery, I'm sure we get quite a bit more than that. So there it is. That is the Acer C720 uh, running Linux on it. It's actually Linux Mint specifically, though you could, again, put pretty much whatever you wanted on it at this point because it has that firmware that's gonna support modern operating systems. If you wanna see more from this laptop, Windows 10 in particular at some point is going on this thing, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things, very helpful for the channel. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if there's something specific that you would actually like to see with this particular Acer Chromebook. And uh, otherwise, I will let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.